Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we are bottling beer, not just any beer. This is Christmas Ale. Let me take a real quick second. Please go ahead and like my video, click that thumbs up button. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell. You'll get notifications when I post new videos. Thanks for doing that, and let's get right to bottling. Started this in the middle of December. The primary fermentation takes about a week to seven days. Then we racked it off into a glass carboy, let it set for about two weeks, cleared most of the sediment, racked it to a different glass carboy, and it's been there since for about another two weeks. So it's pretty clear right now. So we're gonna get to bottling. As I mentioned, we're bottling beer. We have five gallons of holiday ale, sometimes known as Christmas ale, and this is what we're gonna to bottle today. So a couple things we're gonna to need to bottle this stuff is, number one, we're gonna need a bottle filler. Obviously we need the beer. We're gonna need a siphon bucket. This bucket also has a fill spout, so makes for easier filling. There's our siphon tube. This is our no rinse, easy clean sanitizer. You need this for washing your bottles, your bottle caps, sanitizing all your equipment. Definitely need this so you don't get bacteria in your wine or beer. We got our bottle caps. We have our priming sugar. This is what we're gonna to use to carbonate. We do have our bottles. And right now I do have some of my bottle caps in the sanitizer so that we can make sure those are clean before we put them on the caps. And last but not least, this is our old fashioned, this is actually my grandpa's bottle capper. So we're gonna be using this to actually put the caps on the bottles. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is siphon this, take off the sediment to our bucket. So we're gonna use a siphon tube with a tip on it that will actually keep the sediment on the bottom and only take off the clear liquids. We're gonna get the siphon tube in our beer and hook up the hose. So to get the siphon going, we're gonna give it a quick pump and you see the tube fills and now we're siphoning into our bucket. Okay, as you can see, we're almost done here. I'm gonna tip this on its side to get all the liquid that I can, but you're gonna notice that all that sediment on the bottom, you see that? That's what we don't want in our beer. Now, that's not harmful, it's just yeast. You can drink it, but it's kind of bitter. All right, there we go. Now, as I mentioned, we are gonna use priming sugar to carbonate our beer because we're not using CO2. I don't have any kegging equipment, so priming sugar is the way to do it. So basically, I have a cup of boiling water here. We're gonna cut this priming sugar open and just dissolve it in about four to six ounces of water is what the directions say. So we're gonna go ahead and pour this in. We just wanna dissolve this so it's all liquid and in boiling water, it dissolves pretty quick. And there we go. Now that this is all dissolved, we're gonna add this to our beer. So we got our beer ready, we got our mixing spoon. We're just gonna add the priming sugar, the dissolved priming sugar right in and we did a really good job of dissolving it all. There's none in there. So we just want to mix this. This way the priming sugar is evenly distributed through the whole mixture. And you could actually taste or drink the beer at this point. It's just flat. It's not carbonated. Okay, so we have our tube and we have our bottle filler. What we're going to do is hook the tube right up to this outlet. Okay, we have that on there. And we're going to take our fill tube and now we got our bottler on here. So what we're going to do here, we're going to get some bottles lined up. We're going to turn this. You see this little thing right here? That actually will stop the flow of beer in between each bottle. So you press it against the bottom and it will flow. And as soon as you release it, this actually stops the flow. So it's a pretty neat little system here. All right, so we have our bottles lined up. And one thing I want you to notice is these bottles are not screw tops. Do not use screw tops as your bottle caps might not seal correctly. So you wanna use bottles that you definitely have to use a bottle opener to open. You wanna make sure that seal is good and tight. So as I mentioned, if you remember, this little tab right here, as soon as I press this down, the beer will start flowing. And so we're gonna press it to the bottom of the bottle. I'm gonna fill this right up to about midway on the neck of the bottle here, because you don't want too, head, too much head space. They say about two fingers, so. There you go. And as you pull this out, you'll see it come down. That's pretty close, so we could actually give it just a little bit more. And I use a clear bottle, first couple here, so that you can actually see how we're filling. 
And look at that, it fills so easy. And that's all there is to it. So we're gonna fill the rest of these up and show you how to cap these when we're done. And actually, one other thing I did wanna mention is I do have some old Grolsch bottles. So we're gonna use these. Now these are 16 ounce bottles, but that's all right. And they have a refillable or resealable. So these you gotta watch a little closer because it's a dark bottle and it's harder to see. And there it is. So we're gonna let that go. The nice thing about resealing these guys is you just flip this tab up, flip that down and it's sealed. So this beer is actually gonna be good in one week. It takes about a week to carbonate. Okay, so we're done bottling. We yielded 46 total bottles, but 22 of those are Grolsch's and they're 16 ounces instead of 12. So if you do the math, that's seven extra bottles. So 46 and seven, 53 bottles of Christmas ale. Not a bad yield. So let's get to capping these. Okay, so the capping process is pretty easy. Basically, we're going to take our bottle, and then we have our cap. You see how the flanges are kind of spread out? What this piece does is just closes them down around this little rim right here. So put the cap over the top, and you can see right now it's kind of flimsy. Just basically put it under here, press, and you can feel it click, and there you go. Perfectly capped bottle. So we're going to go ahead and finish up the rest here. There we are, all done. Now we just have to let these set a week. They'll carbonate themselves with the priming sugar and they're ready to cool and drink. Okay, so that's all there is to bottle on your own beer. I did have just a tiny bit left over. Like I said, you can drink this the way it is, it's just not carbonated. Tastes like flat Christmas ale. So here's the other thing I'm gonna do. I do have one that I bottled last bottling. I know it's last time because I use my own blank caps. These are silver. The last ones I used were green, so we're gonna get this open. Listen to that. Just like any other beer, it's carbonated. So the one thing the carbonation does is makes all the yeast fall. So you will, you can't really see it here, but there is a little bit of sediment down here. So because it makes it bitter, you can drink it does make it bitter. I like to pour it off into a frosty mug. Let me show you what this looks like. Look at the carbonation here. I gotta pour slow because it's pretty carbonated. Gotta stop, but. So basically again, I pour that until I get down to the sediment. I don't like the sediment. I don't like the bitterness of the yeast. So with Christmas ale, a lot of people like cinnamon around the rim. I like drinking it just the way it is sometimes. Sometimes I do like the cinnamon. So me and the Blues Brothers here, we're gonna have a drink of tasty Christmas ale. Mmm. Mmm. Man, that's good. Look at that. Frosty mug, nice, tasty Christmas ale. I love this stuff. So you can make any kind at your home. Enjoy. Until next time. Cheers.